Cal Palmer. Uh, obviously, big marquee fight week here before UFC 300. So I guess what are the emotions now that you know fight camp's over and just gotta you know make weight and then fight on Saturday? Man, I'm just grateful, grateful for the opportunity. It's been 18 months. Excited to get back in there. So kind of going off of that, physically, how long did it take to you know to get comfortable to get back in there and like first kick and actually feel like all right, you know, I can get back to a full camp. Now? Say like four to six months, but yeah, it was just pretty quick. We could say it's like a honeymoon phase and being healthy really not as healthy as you feel, so just have to listen to the professionals and go off the timeline that they recommend. When they came to you for, you know, 18 months and they still wanted you at USC 300, did that kind of, you know, give you a boost of confidence in how the, the promotion views you? Yeah, I'm always grateful. You know, I'm grateful every opportunity they give me and uh, I was excited when they were coming to Boston in August, although I know that I'm in eight months post-op. But it's a good way to just jumpstart, you know, the comeback. And things work out the, the way they do for a reason. And I feel like the timing's right for UFC 300, such a historic card. It's an honor to be a part of it. When they came to with uh, Al Jermaine uh, to, to welcome him to the featherweight division, the New Yorker, obviously Boston guy, so there's obviously a built-in rivalry there. Well, I guess we, did that get you even more excited that they were still giving you these former champions after 18 months? Yeah, definitely. Uh, big opportunity fighting a former champ. Just if you want to be great, you, know, you want big moment opportunities, those are the guys you got to compete against. And I'm grateful I have another opportunity to step in there against a high level opponent and show why I'm amongst the, one of the best in the division. And when he was a band weight, obviously he cut a lot of weight to get down there. He was just one of the physically bigger uh, 135ers. Do you think his, his grapple can translate to 145 pounds? I mean, I plan on fighting the best out of Maine Sterling, that steps foot in the octagon. So in my mind, He's gonna, he's gonna be at his best version, and I'm prepared to go wherever the fight takes me. In terms of the division, what do you make of you know kind of the development since your last fight? You got a new champion, Bolton Osby's lost back-to-back -back, uh, knockouts. Ryan Ortega's back in the win column. So what do you make of the 145 pound division? To me, it's great to see the movement within the division. Uh, just that they're competing again. Like I said before, I think Yair was dealing with either suspension or just not fighting for a few years. He had some issues and then Ortega being injured, myself being injured. Um, there was a little bit of hold up in the bottom neck and at the top of the division, so it's good to see some movement. And um, yeah, it, it's great to see. Final two for me. Can I get your thoughts on both the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? The main event, the people's main event? Oh, man, I'm excited for both. I hope that our fight gets over with soon enough that I can go all back. And, I'm hopeful I have a chance to just watch it with nobody interrupting me. But um, man, I'm really excited about both matchups. Hey Calvin, Calvin, right here. How's it going? Good. How you doing? I'm doing well. Um, so obviously uh, a lot of time off, and we talked about the injury and all that. Anything in particular you've kind of worked on since uh, since we last saw you? Because obviously it's not like you're sitting on the couch. Anything you're looking to maybe showcase on on uh, Saturday? Just an updated version of myself. Uh, every time I step in there, I'm always looking to do that. So. Nothing new this time around. Um, Sterling, in reference that you two had trained together when you were amateurs or something like that, what do you remember about uh, that time? I was basically an amateur. I never fought an amateur. I went from right off the bat. But the time he's referencing, yeah, it was forever ago. And uh, I made a trip out to Portland, New York, I want to say, and uh, trained with the bomb squad guys. It was a cool experience. And, yeah, it was very brief. And I don't even know if we were really trained together at that moment. We were in the same gym. And, um, you know, credit to New England MMA kind of seeing itself at the highest level here at UFC 300 this Saturday. It's been almost four years since your last three-round fight. Uh, is, is the preparation any different just to, you know, maybe, because again, you got to get it done within three rounds, right? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, getting get going early and uh, being disciplined for 17 minutes. Any golf in between last time we saw you uh, compete and, and after that? Have you been getting in the range at all? No time for golf with the comeback coming up, but on the back end, I'm really looking forward to the change of pace and uh, getting some rounds up for sure. I can't wait. And now, just last one for me, we've got a new champ, obviously, Ilya Teporia. Um, I know it's a bit of a ways away, but just you know, looking at your style and his, uh, two really good strikers, um, just how excited are you for sort of this new regime at 145? Yeah, credit to him. He made that fight relatively easy, although we all know the level of opponent that the former champ is, so that's credit to Tepori for getting the job done like that, but uh, it's just great to see movement within the division, and I'm excited to uh, go out Saturday and stake my claim while I belong amongst the top of it.
just a quick one. You're not only one of the world's best at 145, but you're also a CEO and president of Fight for Ocean Combat Zone. So for you, how is that balance like, and what's your favorite part about it? Yeah, thanks for asking me. I'll show next month after the fight. And I, it, it really, the best thing I can say about that is having a great team around you, man. It's not even just in my personal fighting, but for combat zone. If I didn't have a team uh, around me at, for my personal fighting, I wouldn't be at this level. And I sure as hell would be able to focus on this as well, have a show next month, but I have a great team in combat zone. So it's, it's really motivating and reinvigorating when I, I, I get to be at the show next month where I made my pro debut, you know, and fought nine times for it. It just puts things into perspective, and if it wasn't for a combat zone, I wouldn't be in the UFC. It was the only promotion in New Hampshire, longest running in New England. So a lot of the New, New England greats came out of that company, and uh, I feel a lot of pride in uh, carrying the torch and just providing a stage for the local guys to get the opportunity that I have in front of me now and just show it's possible for the New England, the New England guys to get to the next level. Any names that you think we'll see soon in the UFC? Definitely. Uh, Nick Fiore, uh, big combat zone guy. He did get his shot not too long ago. You'll see him back soon. Uh, Tom Pagliarulo, he's another up-and-coming guy. Uh, these guys have fought main events for us several times back to back. Connor Matthews just you know, fought a couple weeks ago. He was, uh, he did the looking for a fight with Dana for us at the Encore last year. And it's great to see him get his shot. And uh, Brendan Murat, another kid. You know, it's good to just see these guys who are racing our octagon and uh, making making their opportunity to get to the next level, and I'm just happy to play a small role in that, and uh, it's great to see, man. It, it's, uh, my, my coach manager, Tyson Charlie, talks about it too. It's almost more fulfilling being on that end, making people's dreams, or being a part, small part of their dreams coming true, man. It's, uh, it's a great experience. Calvin over here. Uh, Calvin, I was a really big fan of your skits that you did recently with uh, Tommy Barino. Uh, I love your little Rocky woman at the deli. Can you just talk about being a part of that and, you know, just having some fun and just the comedy side of entertainment? Yeah, those guys are good shit, man. Uh, shout out to Tommy and Prosciutto Papi. I love me some Prosciutto, too, after this fight. But uh, those guys, man, they're, uh, they're doing their thing. It was great to be out there, be a part of that. We were promoting uh, a Valentine's Day promo for the upcoming combat show for the past one. Man, those guys are, are professional, but funny as hell, and uh, they're only growing, man. It's great to see just, I, I like support just New England guys just and girls, you know, just, I like to see New England people just rise, man. And I like to see the success, I like to get behind it, and yeah, those guys are a riot. Do you feel like the Celtics will be able to win it all this year? I think so, for sure, man. They got a hell of a team, if not this year, then when, right? Yeah, I'm really excited for the season they have. Hopefully I can catch a game, man. Just when you get these fights coming up, it's tough to tap in anything else. But on the back end, man, uh, I, I'm a big fan of New England sports. And even just watching where the UFC is at, you know, people uh, you know, like to think it's a Las Vegas-based company. Or, yeah, the headquarters are out here, but it's roots are in New England. So uh, great to see just the growth of everything coming from our area. And uh, proud to be a part of it. Calvin, one here in the back. To your left. Yes, sir. Uh, we have a lot of tape on Al Germain. You've been able to see a lot of it. Are you expecting the same Al Germain at 145 pounds or a different one? I'm expecting the best version of Al Germain that presents itself on Saturday. You know, I, I don't see him changing things up because I don't think he really has to. It's worked for him well, you know, to, to get to the point he's at in his career. But I'm uh, sure they'll have things in mind on how to take me out. But I got things in mind for him as well. We'll see who gets theirs off on Saturday night. Thank you. Calvin, Calvin. Uh, this is your first three-round fight since, since UFC 249. So I guess, was it, how was training camp? Like, was it not as, you know, uh, not working on your cardio as much, or, or, or were you still a beast in there? No, I dog it every single camp, man. I, I push myself harder than anybody can push me. And uh, almost my detriment, man. I, you know, being this experience at this point in my life, you know, I try to listen to my body and, and pull back when I can, but that's always the issue. It's never put in the work. And I always say, if I would fall short, it's not because I didn't work hard enough. What's up with the Patriots? What is it? What's up with the Patriots? Next question. <laughs> <laughs>